Hi guys, I'm Simon from Simon Security Experts and today we're going to be going over a Texacom Premier Elite 48 control panel. My own control panel at my own house, so we'll run through it all, show you how it works, you get a really good understanding of the alarm system and it should be a great video. It's quite complicated, I've got a lot going on here so it'll be fun to run through together. I've now been doing these security videos for coming up to six months, I've got 177 subscribers as of today, which is the 22nd of June 2025 absolutely made up it's going great thank you to everyone that's coming along for the journey for those of you that don't know i do actually have my own diy security system just about to be released called the godfather security system it's a great diy setup with easy to follow how-to videos so you can take control of your own security setup if you so choose i'll leave a link to the waiting list in the description or a link to the website depending on when it is you're watching this video if you do sign up to the waiting list while it's still here you'll get a 10 percent discount code upon the system launch it's not going to be up there for much longer because we're launching very, very soon. Within the next one to two weeks will be a full launch of the system. Alternatively, if you ever do have any questions about any security system, whether or not you use the Godfather security system, it doesn't matter. Anything to do with your own security, any questions you've got, please let me know. I'll help you out no matter what, and I enjoy doing it, to be honest. So... Let's get cracking. Let's open this up, run through it together. We've got this here. We've got the Smartcom. We've got the wireless expander. We've got more expanders in there. We've got all sorts going on, and we'll run through it all together. Let's go. So let's begin, guys, by opening up the control panel. Now, if the panel isn't powered down, it will go into tamper alarm, which means if you open up the panel lid, you'll need to put your user code in to cancel that. Alternatively, if you know your engineer code, you can go into the engineer programming menu, and it means you can open up tampers, and it won't trigger the alarm. Let's go. Okay, so as you can see, quite a lot going on in here. Let's bring the camera a little bit closer so you can get a really good look at exactly what's happening. I'm going to run through all the different components of the alarm system on here so you can have a good understanding. So I'm just going to get some things out of the way, such as the backup battery. I'm going to take this off. Just put that up there for now. So this here is a Texacom Premier Elite 48 control panel. So we'll start off from the left-hand side. Well, we'll start off from the top. And then we'll work our way around the left so you can get a good idea of what terminals are doing what, what's happening with the system, what these things are under here, what this is under here, what's going on in here, you know, so, it'll, oh, and this, which is completely redundant now, but I'll explain. In the top, coming in here, you have your alarm flex, which is your mains power that's coming from a fuse spur that's down there, comes out into here and gives us our mains power. From there, it goes through our transformer which applies the power to the panel from this lead here and it plugs onto the top just there. We also have our earth connection just up here in the left-hand side. So starting from the top left up here, you have your earth going into there that goes into your mains power up here, the mains terminals near, near your mains terminals. Here you have your battery terminals. These are the battery leads that go onto the backup battery of the system. Then coming under here, you've got DC plus and DC negative. This is providing your DC power for your communication system, which in my case here is called a dual com. I'll run through that later. Now under here, you have Digicom outputs. What these are essentially pins that fire that go to police and emergency response, the alarm receiving center and things like that. These have pretty much become redundant now, guys, because everything's going over IP. So Digicom pins aren't really used as much as they were but they were really handy. So if you do come across them and you're looking at your control panel, wondering what they are, they're used to send out signals to your alarm receiving center for them to then call the emergency services of some sort. Okay, terminals under here, very important ones. These are your network terminals. So when I say network terminals, this is your power and the DC power here that goes out to things like your keypad, uh, expanders onto the system, you know, wired expanders, which we've got on here, wireless expanders, and here, your TNR are your communication for your network terminals. So four cores, and they'll go out to put things basically onto almost a bus line, which is for the communication going out to all your expanders and devices from the control panel, keypads, wired expanders, wireless expanders, things like that. Not your zones, we're gonna get onto them in a second. Next thing along the list, you have your AUX power, another DC power. Now the AUX power are for your detectors. So these terminals right here are for your detectors, such as your PIRs, your vibration contacts, your external motion sensors, anything that needs 
creates a DC power source as a device gets its power from these here. Now there's four terminals, there's two positives and two negatives. That's because on these systems, sometimes you have so much going into them that there's just extra terminals. That's the reason for it. Whereas more you know, normal panels that are just more basic will only have one positive and negative. This doubles up on it because sometimes you can, need, you can have a lot of cables going into it. Now, next on the list, we have our zones, okay? So here we've got our blue and yellows going into our zones. Now you see here, Usually you have two terminals next to each other that are for your zones, not in this case. In the Texacom Premier Elite, you'll have one going into the far left-hand side and you'll have one going into the far right-hand side of zone one, for example. So if you're wiring this up, don't put them into just here. You'll need to put one into there, miss out the middle two, and one into the other one. And then you can do things like wire it end of line and give it a bit more distinction between the zones, but that's how it's wired on this system. I've seen some people get a little bit confused at that sometimes. They put them into the same zone and it doesn't work because they don't set it up correctly. And then you have on board eight total zones going along. Now, as we get further across, here, this is your bell outputs, you know, for your external sounder. So if you're positive, your bell trigger, your tamper, your zero volts, and your strobe negative. And here is a fuse for it. So if you pop that fuse out, you can test your SAB battery, which is a self-actuating battery, the backup battery that's in the sounder in case, say, someone tries to kill the power to your alarm system and then break in. Then after here, you've got your global tamper circuit. We're not using it on mine because I have end-of-line resistors in my devices, which basically means I don't have a global tamper because mine are individually tampered, basically. So I don't need a global tamper on my system. Then on here, you have your speaker terminals. You have your positive and you have your uh, the positive and negative speaker terminals, 16 ohms going out to the speaker. And then you have a couple of output terminals, which I've used, I think, once in 11, 12 years, however long it is now. So don't worry too much about them. If you're wiring this up, it's very unlikely that you're going to do anything with them. What these are for, you can put an output on, such as, for example, if when someone puts the alarm on to set the system, you have it wired up into here to trigger the output, and maybe it locks a door on a mag lock, for instance. Then as we look further up, up we go. Now, does anyone know what this is? Be impressed if you did. This is a COM2400. It's part of the communication system to go out to your emergency response alarm receiving center. Now, deals with this as well. Your phone line used to go into here and then it would go out and go into your COM2400. However, it's not used anymore because everything's networked on fiber and going over IP. So this is actually something that is redundant now. But in case you see it, that's what it is, a COM2400, and it's very unlikely that you're gonna be using one of these. So if you look at it, don't worry, you don't really have to know what it is anymore. It's to do with phone lines. Your phone line communication would go into there, but people don't have 50 volt phone lines anymore. That's just kind of done with. So yeah, it's something that was important, but it isn't important anymore, don't worry. Now, if we go down again, this sitting in the bottom here is the grade shift UDL. So what this is, is a piece of equipment that talks on a SIM, it goes out over the networks, over the mobile networks, and will send communications to the alarm receiving center if my alarm triggers and they need to call the police or the fire brigade or anything like that. It's all working, well, 50% now working through there. If you'd like me to do a video specifically showing you how to wire up a dual com, I'd be more than happy to do it. It won't be this one because this one's a bit dated, but it'd be a later, newer version, and I could certainly show you how to do that. Then next to it, we have here, a wired expander, because I've got extra zones, you see. But the eight that's on the panel isn't enough. I need extra zones because I've got more going on on my system at home. Here is your network terminals. So these are going to the network terminal that's on the control panel. It comes out, gives it power, and puts it onto the network. Then on here, very important to remember to do dip switches. I've got dip switch one up here, so it's on the first dip switch. Then I've got my zones. My power is going into here for my aux power for the devices. On here, there's a jumper. I've disabled the tamper. The reason I've disabled the tamper because I'd always recommend having a tamper enabled. It's because I've actually put it inside the control panel. So it's protected from the, con from the tamper of the control panel. So I don't actually need to have this individually tampered if it's already protected by a tamper. Next, we have, get down a bit lower, this here, which is our wireless expander because I've got one wireless device on this. Now don't get me wrong, you all know that I do not appreciate Texacom wireless nowadays. It's let me down so much. It's been a real problem. However, the, the smoke sensor, to be fair, has never given me any problems. So I'm just going to open this up so you can get a feel for it and understand it a little bit. So you can see there, 
the network cables are going into the network terminals just there and you'll see the dip switch i've actually got this on dip switch number four because you need to get it out the way of the what it needs to be later on in the zone list for a prex uh, prexicon texacon 48 so the first lot of zones are taken up by wired zones and then the last eight zones i've got so zones 40 to 48 i've got with my wireless expander here so i've just put it on number four dip switch there that's all you need to do on that guys once you learn that onto the system when you confirm devices it'll find it and then you can start learning wireless devices onto it which i'll show you how to do in this video so let's close that up because it's not a great deal to see in that to be honest let's go up again and what we have here is the smart com. This is connected to the cloud with that left light just there and connected to the Wi-Fi on that light just there. I'm also using this as communication to the alarm receiving center. However, I don't like to only use this because unfortunately, Texacom have had problems with it in the past and sometimes it hasn't been communicating correctly, which is why on my own alarm, I use this and I use a dual com. But this is how you get the app as well. This takes you to the cloud, you make an account and you can have the app on your system. I'd really prefer it if it was a really small unit that could sit inside the panel. It's all right in this case because it's just in the back room, but some people don't want this big block next to their alarm panel, let's say in the hall, but you know, it is what it is. This has a connection that goes in. So I'll take this off so you can see here, you have that connection going into there and that goes back into the control panel. And this is the cable for that. It goes on to COM1 and COM2. Okay, so the one with four cables goes on to COM1. The one with two cables goes on to COM2. So if you've been watching this whole way, guys, you'll know a lot more about how a Texacom Premier Elite is wired, what goes where and how it works. Now we'll go to the keypad, do a little bit of a demo on there so you can see exactly what's happening, how you can do things in the keypad. And I'll show you how to learn on a wireless piece of equipment. Okay, here we go. This is the Texacom Premier Elite engineer mode. So what you have here when you come into your engineer menu is yes to select zone setup. So I'll run through a little bit about what this is. Currently my zone one is not used because it's my front door and I'm doing a little bit of work on the architrave. If we press yes, and we go through here, you can go through the attributes, see what areas it will trigger for if you're partitioning the system. And I've got my zone label as front door. Chime silence, unless I want to chime on, you know, if it's a business premises, for example, and you want to chime anytime someone comes in and out, remote test off, that stays the same. Double pole, end of line, because that's how I actually wire my system. Now, if you were doing it conventionally as a normally closed system, you will need to press no, press zero, normally closed. Okay, so you'll need to choose that one. You can have normally open, which would just be a bit weird. It's uncommon. But double pole, end the line is where mine will be sitting. So press yes to that. So if there's anything you want to change in the menus of your zone, okay? You can scroll through the zone numbers on here. You can also type in the zone numbers, 001. If you press yes, it will take you through the menus. Not ricochet because it's not wireless. If I wanted to change from not used to a used zone, I can press no. And I can go through whatever zone I might like that to be. If you maybe want a PA that's audible, a silent PA. You know, it's a fire zone like we'll be learning on shortly for the wireless detector. Medical, these are for, say, man down systems or if someone presses the button on a wrist and then it will send the emergency services. So if it's a monitored system, they'll know to send the emergency services immediately with an ambulance if you've got something programmed on a medical. 24 hour gas. So you've got a lot that you can choose from on here. I'm not going to choose any of them. I'm going to press zero and take it to not used till I've done the door work. However, if I go to zero, zero, two, which is my hallway. I've got that program. There's an entry and exit and another one on my lounge. It's currently an entry and exit. And you go through there, guard zones on here. And now we're going to go out of here. Actually, first of all, what we'll do is show you how to learn on a wireless device. So when you're at yes to select zone setup, press omit. It says learn ricochet. Press yes to that, all devices learned. What? Next, you have area programming, which you can go through and set your timers for the system, such as entry delay and exit delay. You can go through arming modes if you want it on timed exit, or maybe you want it on entry and exit, which would be your door contact, and put that to timed exit for me at the moment. And you can go through all your options on here. Global options, this is where you can do things like set up system timers, such as the bell delay, bell duration, things like that. System config. This is where you can go through some specific options. System options, you can go through your level of your speaker level and things like that, your anti-code resets. Monitor hardware, this is where you can go through what it is that your system is actually looking for. So if you, for instance, wanted to temporarily take off the bell tamper, you could press no to here, it go to a star and then your system wouldn't be looking for it. 
So this is just a general overview, guys. I can go more in detail and specific thing if you need more information. System text, when you want to change things like your banner, banner message and things like that, or your location text, banner message there. You can go into part arm text if you want to change the, the, the titles of your part arms, such as night set, dog in set, things like that. Keypad setup, if you've got more than one keypad, you can define them to certain areas. Expander setup, you've got expanders onto the system. System outputs, this can often be used for your panel outputs, you know, when the digi outputs that we did with the pins earlier on. Oh, we don't want to log off yet. Engineer utilities, in here we can view the event log, do bell tests, do walk tests, view zone statuses and things like that. That's what we need in terms of... Uh, for, for an engineer going through different types, you can also see things like your percentage levels of wireless devices, you know, so you can check what percentage they're getting, make sure it's got a solid connection. Part arm zones, enabling and disabling specific zones based on what part arm you're gonna be using. Learn Ricochet, which we'll go into shortly, which is for learning wireless devices onto the system and then you can exit menu. So lastly, guys, I wanted to show you exactly how to learn on a wireless sensor onto a Texacom Premier Elite. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to because as in true Texacom wireless fashion, the expander isn't working. So it's not seeing it. This expander, which you can see on devices here, the expander there, you can see that one, but it's not seeing number four. There's a problem with wireless expander. I've had the wireless devices disabled temporarily because I've only got a smoke sensor on it. And I've got wired smoke sensors for the other ones. So I've just went now. I thought this would be a good time to show you how to learn on a wireless device, but the wireless expander's broken or the panel's not seeing it. So I'll have to figure out what's going on there and fix it. And so I'll do a separate video on how to learn in a wireless sensor onto a Texacom Premier Elite. The wired side of Texacom is phenomenal. I can't praise it enough. The wireless, well, you've seen it. So that's it guys, some information about a Texacom Premier Elite so you can understand it a little bit more. If there's anything specific you would like me to go over with this panel, I'd be more than happy to help with that. So just let me know in the comments. Like I said, the Godfather security system is being released in the next week or two. So I'll leave the info for that in the description if you wanna sign up to the waiting list or you wanna to go to the website and get your own DIY security setup. And any questions, anything you wanna run over with any alarm system, if it's yours, if you need help with it, put it in the comments on any video and I will reply to it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one.